Welcome to Talking Life and to a whole new way of living. I'm Raja, your excellence mentor on this journey called life. My goal on this channel is to make life a lot simpler and easier and less stressful for you so you can live an amazing one. Thank you for all of you who engaged with my emotional detox video and sent me emails, comments, or called me. That's why I'm devoting today's video to talk about some of the questions and the comments that you sent me. If you haven't watched that video, I'm going to either link it up here or in the description box. And today I'm going to respond to two questions or comments that I received. The third one I'm going to leave till another time. So the first question that came was from a viewer that told me, how can I set boundaries? Because the third step in the emotional detox was about setting boundaries and drawing the line. Now, if you have no issue with people calling you any time of the day or the night or whenever they need support and you're fine with it and it's not affecting you or your life, then fine, keep it, go ahead. But what I'm talking about here is when something is throwing you out of balance, when you are now affected by what other people are dumping on you and you're feeling emotionally drained. I totally get it that in certain cultures, it is very hard to say no to others. And there are consequences usually if you say no. However, this is a habit that needs to be refined and need to be modified because when we live in Canada, it's a totally different kind of living than being overseas. When you were living overseas, you had a lot of help, you had a lot of support, so you had more time to spend with friends and family members and help them and support them. This is not the case in Canada. Most of us, we work long hours and we do not have support to help us with running the household or with the children. And therefore, you need to be more vigilant looking after your health and especially emotional health, which what we are talking about in the emotional detox video and over here. So my caller asked me, how can I draw the line? Uh, if my neighbor needs help or support, she always calls me and I have to drop everything and I have to listen to her. And I'm gonna tell my caller, if that's fine with you, then go ahead and do it. But I sense that this is interrupting your life because you told me that you had to drop everything when you're in the middle of doing something and going to support her. If that's the case, then that is when we need to set some boundaries and draw the line for when we can support others. So let me give you a scenario. Your neighbor calls you. You're in the middle of doing something. You're either busy with the children, doing homework with them, or doing the laundry, or whatever chore you're doing at home. Then you drop everything. You either spend the time over the phone with your neighbor or go to her, whatever uh, way you're gonna support her. And then by the time you come home, or you're done with your phone call, you're gonna find out that you still have to do your chores at home. You still have to spend time with the children and follow up with their homework. And you have not spent time with your husband. So if that's the case, how you think you're gonna feel? And I'm pretty sure that this 
if it happens on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, it is going to take you away from doing what you need to do, which means it's going to add more stress and more pressure and you will be more tensed and agitated and overwhelmed with everything that you have to do. If this is the case, then I think by telling you to set some boundaries and draw the line, that would be the kind thing to do. And it's kind to you and to your neighbor or whoever needs your assistance. And that's what I meant by drawing the line and setting boundaries. You can always tell them that you can't talk at this point. You will get back to them. You can always leave a voice message on in your machine to say that you can't come to the phone right now and then you're gonna get back to people. You can as well uh, text them if you want to do that. You don't want them to wait, but text and tell them that you're gonna call them as soon as you can. So these are simple strategies that you can do to set boundaries and draw the line. The last thing I wanna say about this point is that usually when we're always running to help others and we cannot set boundaries and we cannot draw the line and say no, there are other issues that are lingering in the background and happening in our life. Why is it that we can't say no? So I'm gonna be leaving this issue to another video so we can talk some more about it. Now I understand that in certain cultures it's more difficult to do so than others, but you are here now in Canada and you need to adapt new strategies that can help you deal with living in Canada. The second comment that I received was from another viewer who disagreed with what I said. And she said that if we are strong, then we will not allow others to drain us emotionally. And to that reader or viewer, because I'm used to writing, <laughs> sorry, to that viewer, what I wanna say that I'm gonna disagree with you and I'm gonna tell you why. If you said that strong people do not get affected and emotionally drained, then this is not true because I know for a fact from personal experience and professional experience that people that are strong, they are the ones that are affected the most. And you know why? Because people usually flock to them. They, they come to them all the time for advice and support. And because they are strong people, they don't want first to say no, second, they want to help, and third, they think they can handle it and at any time. So the thing is then that strong people, they may be the ones that need the break but they can't say that because they have this feeling that others need them. So that's one thing. The second thing is that it depends on the personality traits. Not everyone is gonna be affected the same way and emotionally drained in the same capacity. Let me give you an example. So a person that with personal trait that is more logical or more analytical and doesn't deal much with emotions, this person will not be drained emotionally as much as another personality type. And this is either because they don't allow these people to drain them, it's because of who they are. So they don't really even give a chance to others to keep on talking and uh, complaining. That's their nature. So people that want to drain their emotions and dump them on someone else will find another personality. So those are the people with that kind of personality that will not be drained emotionally. 
And the other thing I want to talk about is the other personalities. So you have a different personality that is very supportive, that is empathic, that is kind, compassionate, and is a good listener. Those are the kind of personalities that after being with people for a long time and supporting others, that will be drained emotionally. It's not because they are weak. To the contrary, they are strong and they have strong traits and values that make others come to them all the time for support and help. So that's with regards to different kind of personalities. Now, what, where you will find that people are drained emotionally is usually in the helping profession. For example, nurses, social workers, humanitarians, any of these people that do work in the community that need to be in touch with uh, people, um, therapists, uh, counselors, anyone that deals with people either through very, very severe trauma that went through severe trauma that they're supporting them or even just for the daily living stresses. So eventually after years of listening to all of this emotional issues, all these emotions will drain you. So you will feel exhausted and emotionally unbalanced. So there are different scenarios that we're talking about here that can affect us emotionally, even when we protect ourselves, even when we, we do other things that will help us to stay in balance. But sometimes we can get out of balance and move to that different state. And that's why I was talking about the emotional detoxing. Now, in the video that was following the emotional detox, which was step number four, I believe, the energetic detox, again, I will link it in the information box or up here. In that video, I talked about certain ways to detox our energy field and our space. So this, these are some ways that can keep us um, like healthier, clean the energy, uh, let go of negative energy that doesn't belong to us and stay like light and not feeling sluggish and heavy. Because usually that's the feeling when people dump on you. And I'm not talking about it when I say dump. I'm not talking about it in a bad way at all. It is just when people have to uh, vent have to talk about something but for you it becomes too much to keep listening to these emotional uh, issues day in and day out and that's when I talk about setting boundaries drawing the line of course in a certain profession it's hard to do so but maybe I'll talk about that in another video as well where uh, people in the helping profession can do certain things that can help them stay emotionally healthy and do some self-care. And I have a lot of tools that can help you with that as well. Uh, I had a third question which was posed on at me several times when I am with people. And I will leave the answer to that in another video because it's going to be a separate uh, video. Otherwise, we're going to spend the whole time talking about it here. So for that question where people ask me, what am I going to do with people that live with me that are negative and that drain me? and I can't get rid of them. So for example, if you have a spouse or a child or a partner that is very negative and that is affecting your relationship. So that will be another video that I will be talking about as well, how to protect yourself, 
in the meantime you can check the energetic detox video because at least that's gonna help you get rid of any negative energy that lingers in the space or in your aura and after that I will be talking about other ways without even doing anything just by using the power of the mind and the mind body connection and on how to stop that negativity from getting to you so thank you so much for being here and let me know if you have any more questions or if you have any more subjects or issues or ideas that you want me to talk about here that is pertained to life and to making your life a lot easier and simpler. Please don't forget to subscribe, connect with me on social media or visit my website to get more tips and tools on how to deal with life. Thank you, peace and love to you.